Odontogenic Myxoma by Ariel Brinkman and Sammy Blaha. Definition and Clinical Findings Odontogenic myxoma is a rare, benign, intraosseous tumor. Histologically, the tumor is non-encapsulated and arises from odontogenic ectomesenchyme. It is found and developed solely in the jaws and represents a small percentage of odontogenic tumors overall. Odontogenic myxoma may or may not be symptomatic to the patient due to its slow growth. When symptomatic, patients have been known to report facial asymmetry and an abnormal growth in the area of the tumor, swelling, pain, and occasionally numbness. Nosebleeds have also been associated with a small percentage of maxillary growing tumors that have invaded the maxillary sinus. As you can see in the photo to the right, the patient has experienced facial asymmetry in the lower mandibular region. Clinical signs include a local invasion at the side of the tumor, most commonly in the tooth-bearing regions of the jaws. Due to the local invasion of the surrounding structures, tooth mobility, ulceration, root resorption, encroachment upon the mandibular canal, and invasion of the maxillary sinus have all been found as clinical signs. The picture shows an intraoral view indicating swelling in the left buccal and lingual vestibular regions of the lower left mandible. The demographics of odontogenic myxoma can be found in either males or females, but its occurrence slightly favors females. The tumor can occur within any age group, but greater than 50% of them are found in the age range of 10 to 40 years old. In one study, a mean age of 29 was found. Odontogenic myxoma favors growth in the mandible three times that of the maxilla and has a 25% rate of recurrence. In one study done by the University of Western Cape, 75% of the maxillary tumors found occurred in the posterior tooth region, and 76.9% of the maxillary tumors found also occurred in the posterior tooth region. The tumor is rare, representing less than 10% of all odontogenic tumors, but in some countries found, it is to be the second most common tumor, odontogenic tumor after myeloblastoma. Figure 4 is an extraoral view showing a diffuse swelling on the left mandibular body region, resulting in a slight facial asymmetry. These are the radiographic findings of odontogenic myxoma classified according to the acronym lesions. L. Location. Odontogenic myxoma is most commonly found in the premolar and molar tooth-bearing regions of both the mandible and maxilla. Most often, it is associated with missing teeth in the area of the tumor and is more commonly found in the mandible. Edge. Usually well-defined. Cortication of the edge is variable. Shape. The shape varies, but scallops between the roots of adjacent teeth are common. Internal structure. The majority of the tumors have been found to be radiolucent, with fine or coarse trabeculae within. Odontogenic myxoma has also been found to be unilocular and multilocular, with a greater occurrence in the latter. Other. When growing in dentate areas, the tumor commonly displaces adjacent teeth. It may also cause migration of associated teeth, or affect impacted and unerupted teeth, but rarely causes root resorption. The tumor may impinge the inferior alveolar nerve and canal when found in the mandible. It may also extend into the maxillary sinus, orbit, and nasal cavity when found in the maxilla. Number. Odontogenic myxoma is normally single. Size. The size is variable and has potential to grow very large if left untreated. This is a larger view of the pantomograph shown in the previous slide showing odontogenic myxoma. The radiograph shows a large, well-defined sclerotic margined multilocular radiolucent lesion with soap bubble appearance on the right side of the mandible. The differential interpretation of odontogenic myxoma includes other lesions that are multilocular in appearance. These include, in order of likelihood, odontogenic myxoma, ameloblastoma, 
giant cell granuloma, and central hemangioma. Odontogenic myxoma is the second most common odontogenic tumor. It can be found in the posterior mandible and maxilla and usually presents as a well-defined radiolucent unilocular or multilocular area. One or two straight, sharp septa is characteristic of odontogenic myxoma and will help distinguish this from other differentials. Ameloblastoma is a true neoplasm of odontogenic epithelium. Most develop in the mandible and it is usually well defined due to the slow growth rate. It is radiolucent and can be unilocular or multilocular, giving it a soap bubble appearance. Giant cell granuloma is a reactive lesion of the jaw and typically occurs twice as often in the mandible as it does in the maxilla. It is radiolucent and appears as a well-defined in the mandible to ill-defined with wispy septa in the maxilla. Odontogenic myxoma typically occurs in an older age group compared to giant cell granuloma. Central hemangioma is a proliferation of blood vessels that creates a mass and can look like a neoplasm. It is more likely to affect the mandible and appears radiolucent with a well-defined or corticated border. If it affects the periosteum, it can appear with either a sunburst or multilocular pattern. The standard of treatment for odontogenic myxoma includes surgery, excision, or a nucleation of the tumor and ranges from a conservative treatment option to a more radical approach. The conservative surgical treatment option includes careful enucleation and curatage of the bony tumor bed. This option can be difficult because odontogenic myxoma is not encapsulated and penetrates the surrounding bone, making it difficult to fully remove. The likelihood of recurrence for this treatment approach is an average of 25%. The more conservative approach is advocated in younger children with odontogenic myxoma to prevent disfigurement due to damage of the facial growth centers by the surgery. The more radical approach includes partial and full segmentations of the maxilla and mandible. This approach removes the lesions along with 1 to 2 centimeters of adjacent tissues, greatly reducing the risk of recurrence, which is thought to be caused by incomplete removal. Overall, the more radical approach is more highly recommended to reduce the number of surgeries required to remove the lesion due to recurrence. No matter which approach is chosen, patients should be followed for a minimum of 2 years up to 15 years to make sure that the lesion has not returned. Surgical treatment of odontogenic myxoma should be referred to an oral and maxillofacial surgeon. This surgeon has undergone an extra four years of training after dental school in a hospital-based setting focusing on the hard and soft tissues of the face, mouth, and jaws. This extensive training prepares them to treat a wide variety of conditions ranging from trauma injuries, aesthetics, and functions, and oral cancers. Surgery is recommended as soon as possible but it is not life-threatening to do so due to the slow-growing and asymptomatic nature of the lesion. On the right is a picture of a, of a resected segment of the right mandible. Patients will present with facial asymmetry in either the posterior mandible or maxilla. The tumor may become quite large if left untreated. Odontogenic myxoma has potential to invade surrounding tissues and structures, including uninterrupted teeth, leading to potential tooth mobility or displacement. The radiographic findings are usually unilateral and in the posterior mandible or maxillary tooth bearing regions. Internally, the tumor may present as a radiolucent entity with fine septa within or in a unilocular or multilocular way. The border is usually well defined. The best treatment option for odontogenic myxoma is radical surgical excision of the lesion and the surrounding tissues. This treatment option has been found to have less recurrences, which reduces the number of surgeries required to remove the lesion. And these are our resources. And these are our photo credits.